Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us his holy word, in which we can learn how to please him. Hallelujah. And blessed be the name of the Lord who saves us. The name of Jesus Christ is the only name by which men can be saved. Hallelujah. So I want to speak to you today, my sister, is about a very important Christian principle that most people have forgotten these days. And it's especially important in these times for we, we who love the truth to abide in the scripture and understand these things from the Holy Word of God. So the Word of God, if you speak English, is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. There are other translations that have been deliberately corrupted. And so I ask that people use the King James Version of the Holy Bible, lest they be deceived. So let's begin today in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. Jesus Christ saith, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the mother against her daughter, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's foes shall be they of his own household. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, there's a lot of people, a lot of religious people, and a lot of deceived people who have been taught many lies. And one of the lies that they've been taught is that it's a Christian's job to argue, to contend with people who have basically lost their minds. Now, the reason people have lost their minds is because they prefer their sins. And when someone prefers their sins and they don't want to consider that maybe what they're doing isn't pleasing the Lord, they become willfully blind. We can read of this in Second Thessalonians. So let's turn there and please hold your place in Matthew. So let's go to Second Thessalonians, Hallelujah, and chapter two to understand how this happens, where people willfully give up the ability to discern what is good and what is right. Let's read here, starting in verse ten. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Now here when we're reading that people have not received the love of the truth, we can understand two things. One of, one of which that's very important is that if we love the truth, it is a gift from God. But the other thing that we can understand from this is that when someone doesn't want to hear the truth, they're refusing to receive it. And verily, the truth about God is written for anyone who wants to know it. So people who don't love the truth, they have in their heart that they want their own way. They don't want God's way. There's something about the law of God that they don't like. And for that reason, they have what is called in the scripture, the deceivableness of unrighteousness. In other words, they become easily deceived. Let's read on now in verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, strong del delusion comes from God, and it's the righteous judgment against people who refuse to obey his word. And particularly, I would call your attention to religious people who claim to know him, who claim to serve him, but don't want to obey him. And Jesus Christ said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. So if someone says that they love God or they know God and they don't obey him, they're not telling themselves the truth. And for that reason, they become deceivable. So let's read on. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So sin is pleasurable for a season. And there are things in the world that make life easy. But a Christian is not guaranteed an easy life. And we understand that the sword that Jesus Christ was speaking of in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, is not a physical sword. 
It's a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. See, the Word of God says that it cuts, it divides between soul and spirit. And when we are Christians, we understand that the truth of God's word is what we must cling to. But in our time, there are many religious people who have become deceived because they prefer their iniquity. Let's go now to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. Now, I'm not going to read all of 2 Timothy chapter 3 for you right now. But this is speaking about how men will be, men and women. When, when the Bible says men, it's talking about mankind for the most part, unless there is some other distinction that lets us know it's specifically talking about males or females. But men or mankind are often referred to in the scripture, and we who are Christians, we understand that the word of God is for everybody, be they male or female. So in first, pardon me, in Second Timothy chapter 3, starting verse 1, we read about the perilous times that we are now in. And what we want to understand, my sisters, when we're a Christian woman, is that there are many things that seem right that are not right. And there are many things that we as Christian women need to understand if we're going to make it into the kingdom. So this is a very serious message, and I urge you to listen carefully. So let's go now to verse 12. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise, unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by God, by inspiration of God, pardon me. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we understand that we're living in perilous times and that evil men shall work, wax worse and worse. And now let's go back to Matthew chapter 10 and begin again in verse 34 and understand that the word of God is the sword of the spirit and that the sword of the spirit that we believe in and that we speak is going to cause some things to happen. Verse 34, think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. My sisters, this is true of all Christians, be we male or female. There are times when we who serve the Lord are going to suffer persecution. And the persecution that we suffer often is from those who are close to us. These are not easy things, and I cannot be your conscience for you. I can't tell you what to do. But there are situations that I'm aware of that I'm going to speak about now. Some of you are married to a man who has believed the lie that's out there right now, a certain lie about a certain thing that is going to cause judgment to come upon the people of the earth because they prefer to get their healing and their protection from sorcerers rather than from God 
They don't trust in Jesus Christ for their health and their well-being. They don't want to walk in the ways of the Lord. And so they seek for solutions from sorcerers and wicked men that are waxing worse and worse. And some of us are married to a man who has believed this lie. Or we have adult children who have believed this lie. Or parents that we might be living with that believe this lie. And one of the most difficult things that we as Christian women can face is when those that are beloved unto us, dear to our heart, have believed these lies. It's very hard on the heart, but verily I say unto you what Jesus Christ said. Verse 36 and 37, Matthew chapter 10. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And there are times when we're going to have to stand up for the truth of what the scripture says, even if it means that we suffer persecution. We as women naturally love our husbands, and we naturally respect our earthly parents. And we naturally love our children, but those people cannot become our God. And we must stand in the truth, because if we don't, how are they going to see the light? There are many situations wherein someone might resist the truth, and they might be mad at us for, us, and I, for this, and I'll use a very simple example. Maybe someone is offended by our head covering, and they mock us, they ridicule us. And it's very easy to think, oh, well, you know, if my husband doesn't like it, I, don't, I won't wear it all the time, or I'll, I'll compromise about the Word of God. But the Word of God says that a woman that prayeth or prophesieth without her veil on, without her hair covered, dishonors God. And so we know that it's not a small thing. And we obey God and not men. There might be people who are offended when we tell them, that sorcery is poison, and that poison kills, and that that's not the answer to the problems that we face in this world. It's not how we address problems in our flesh that cause disease, because disease and sin are inevitably connected. And I'm not saying that if you're sick, it's your fault. I'm saying that sin and disease are connected. And that Jesus Christ came to save us from our sins, as it is written in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world, the only begotten Son of the living God, born of a woman made under the law. He came into the world to save his people from their sins. And we who are Christians have been saved from our sins by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. We understand that there is no other way of salvation. There is no other way to be reconciled unto God. And verily, it's not hard. It's not hard to obey the gospel. But what is hard for people is to give up their old ideas. They don't want to admit that maybe they've been wrong for 25 years. Maybe they don't want to admit that the things that they're doing are going to cause them to go to hell or have caused beloved family members to go to hell. You see, it's very hard to face, for example, that someone that you loved very much, maybe your great-grandfather, who died when you were young and was very dear unto you, that he didn't make it into the kingdom. It's very hard to admit that all your friends and family members who are going down to the local church and worshiping God the Son, that they don't know God and they don't know Jesus Christ. They do not know that Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, came into the world to save sinners, and that that perfect man, who is without sin because God was his father, laid down his innocent life and shed his blood for those who would believe on his name, in other words, know who he is, and be baptized in that name for the remission of sins. When our sins remitted, are remitted, pardon me, that is when we are saved. We are not saved just because we believe. And I'm not saying to believe is wrong, because believing is good. If you don't believe, it's not going to do you any good to get baptized in Jesus' name. And you have to believe in him. You have to believe in the living God, the only true God that Jesus Christ prayed to. 
Let's go to John, the Gospel according to John, and chapter 16. John chapter 16, starting in verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your hearts shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Hallelujah. See, we who hope in Jesus, we understand that his kingdom is not of this world. And when various religious people or people who aren't religious are consumed with delusions, we don't argue with them. We don't fight with them. Rather, what we do is we walk in the light. And if that means that they hate us, then they hate us for the light that we bear. They don't hate us for our flesh rising up and getting all indignant about what they're doing. I'm going to give you an example, my sisters. If you went into a hospital to visit someone who is very, very sick, perhaps they have a fever of 105. Oftentimes, people who have a very high fever like that are sick in their mind as well as their body. And they rant and rave and say things that they don't mean. They might think that you're some kind of a devil when you walk in the room and start telling you or telling other people that you've committed some crime against them. When we're in that situation, we would not view that person as, as what they're saying is valid. We wouldn't argue with them either. We would pray for them, perhaps. We would look at them with compassion, understanding that only God can deliver someone from delusion. As much as we might want to save our children and our husband and our parents and our uncles and aunts and all our friends down at the local church, verily there is only one who can save anybody. And Christian women, in particular, are not contentious, haughty, proud people who are trying to make themselves look right so that everybody will follow them. Rather, what we do as godly women is we walk in grace and humility, and we bear the word of God in our heart and on our lips and speak the truth with love. And if people don't like it, it if they don't like it or they don't like us because of us, be, pardon me, I'll slow down. If they don't like it or they don't like us because of this and they cast us away from their presence, then we can rejoice because we serve the living God. And the things that we are promised are not of this world. And Jesus never said that serving him would be popular. Verily, he said the opposite. So when we have family members who are now under a very common delusion, and they are taking part in things that are medical experiments that verily might kill them, the answer is not to try to convince them that they're wrong. The answer instead is to walk in the light ourselves, testify about the truth of the healing that is found in Jesus Christ, and testify of his kingdom, walking in holiness, and peaceableness and kindness. And when we do these things, then if people revile us or hate us or cast us forth from their household, if they say that we're crazy or we're in a cult or what have you, then we know that we're suffering for the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's go to, finally now to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And before I read this, what I want to say is this. We all have a choice every single day about whom it is we serve. 
We all have available to us the Holy Scriptures. And we who are baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Spirit, or we're waiting for it, we have access to the throne of grace. And when we pray, the Lord heareth our prayers. Jesus said, Whatsoever ye ask in my name, believing ye shall receive. Now this doesn't mean that our prayers will save somebody. But what it does mean is that when we obey God, and go into our prayer closet and pray in secret, he will reward us openly. And I personally can testify that I have seen hard hearts break. I have seen those who are deluded see the light. And it's not because of me, it's because of the promises of God that if we ask anything according to his will, he will give it unto us. So some people will never receive the truth because they don't want to. But when we pray, that is a very powerful thing. It's one of the most powerful things that is available to a Christian because when we pray, it is the living God who made all things, who hears us. And when we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son who shed his innocent blood to save us, that is powerful. That is powerful. It isn't a guarantee because everybody has a free will. And there are many people who just don't want to hear the truth. And if they just don't want to hear it, they won't be able to. But verily I say unto you that we trust in God and we obey him even when it seems impossible. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, starting in verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. So love to God is expressed by doing his commandments. Love unto God is expressed when we trust in his word despite what we might see or what people might say or what we might think. You see, we have faith in the everlasting God and we trust in his glory, which is invisible unto the people of this world. And when they come against us, and when they revile us and persecute us, and cast us forth from our own home, when they hate us, when beloved family members and friends hate us, then we pray for them as Jesus Christ commanded. And we trust these words. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I pray this message has helped those of you, my sisters, who are married to people, or to a man, pardon me, married to a man who has believed a common lie, or living with your parents who have believed a common lie, or your adult children have believed a common lie, or your best friend. When these things happen to you, my sisters, remember this that the Lord our God sees you, and he will give you strength to endure, even unto the very end. Feel free to email me if you like, or to comment in the comment section underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and bring comfort and strength unto those who seek Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen.